Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about some of the things that annoy me about living in Australia. I did a video previously about the assumptions of being an African or Ghanaian living in Australia and um, you guys seem to enjoy that video. So today I thought let me do a video about some of the things that annoy me about living in Australia. These are my own personal things, frustrations. They're not that deep but they're just those things that you're just like, oh it's so annoying that XYZ. Let's get right into it, but before that, please, if you like this video, please don't forget to click and subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first one is shopping online. Now, being that Australia is so far away from the rest of the world, when you're buying stuff online, if they don't offer free shipping, I'm generally not going to be buying it because the shipping is always ridiculous. For example, the affordable wig series that I did. Okay, so the wigs were affordable in US dollars, but when you did the conversion to Australian dollars, it wasn't you know that cheap considering they're synthetic wigs and then in a lot of cases the shipping was just as much as the item itself which is really annoying so that's probably the first thing that comes straight to mind when I think about living in Australia is online shopping is difficult because shipping can be very expensive and that doesn't only go for you know paying for shipping when you're receiving stuff. Also, when you're shipping stuff outside of Australia, it's super expensive as well. For example, a small package less than 500 grams to the US is like 24 Australian dollars. So it doesn't make sense in the end. And also sometimes websites actually do not ship to Australia. For example, I was looking for a wig recently and um, I couldn't find it on any website. Then I found one and it was a Canadian uh, store or Canadian website and I went through the process of trying to order then I got to the part where put your address comes in and when I put it in sorry we don't ship to this country so yeah some eBay sellers don't ship to Australia um, some websites don't ship to Australia which is annoying because we want the stuff just as much as everyone else wants the stuff so yeah that's just another annoying frustrating thing okay, so this next one is kind of in line with you know online shopping and the next few that I will tell you about are kind of in the same realm. So another one is shopping on Amazon. So we have Amazon Australia, we have Amazon US. Now all the good stuff is on the Amazon US site. However, when you select an item or when you see an item, although it says we'll ship to Australia, when you go through the ordering process, when you try and put an Australian address, it doesn't like accept it. So they actually don't ship stuff um, on the Amazon US site to Australian locations, which is super annoying. So some of the wigs, once again, the affordable wigs that I got, um, I saw some on Amazon, like everything is on Amazon. So I saw some wigs on there. So I would actually have to ship it to my friend in New York. And then when she received it, she would ship it to me here in Australia. So I'm paying shipping twice which is super annoying. Like I said, the Australian Amazon site has absolutely nothing I'm interested in. The US Amazon site has all the good stuff. So it's frustrating that I can't just jump on the Amazon US site, see something, click it, buy it, and have it delivered to me. So that's another annoying thing. Okay, so still talking about shipping. Shipping usually takes a lot longer to get to Australia. As I mentioned before, Australia is on the other side of the world. It takes me anywhere from 24 hours to 38 hours if I wanna to travel to Ghana. So getting stuff shipped here, definitely takes a lot longer so if I want something I have to plan ahead of time to make sure that I will get it in time so yeah that's another thing okay so while we're still on the topic of online shopping another annoying thing is most of the stuff that I like is priced in US dollars they're US based stores US based websites and obviously I have to convert to Australian dollars to know how much I'm actually going to be paying so you know if I see something I like on a website I usually go into PayPal and do the conversion and see where whether it's worth me paying that money um, to get the item. So yeah, it's annoying that everything's in US dollars because sometimes you see an item, you're like, oh wow, that price is really good. And then you're like, oh, okay, I have to do the conversion now. And the US to Australian dollar isn't the best. So I end up paying a lot more for my item. And sometimes it's just not worth it. If I'm paying like 30 US dollars for a wig, that ends up to be like, you know, 40 something, maybe almost 50 Australian dollars. And if it's a synthetic wig, like I mentioned before, uh, you know, like, do I really want to spend $50 on a synthetic wig? So yeah, that's the other annoying thing. The conversion rates aren't the best from US to Australian dollars. So 
I always end up paying more. Okay, another annoying thing about living in Australia is we don't have access to beauty supply stores like you guys do in the US and the UK where it's readily available to you. So yeah, we can't just walk into a store and you know, see a product and buy it at a very inexpensive price, come home and try it and if we don't like it, it's all good because we didn't pay a lot for it. Um, yeah, beauty supply stores are not a thing here. So yeah, I would love to walk into a store and just grab a ponytail for like 10 bucks, buy some Mali hair for like $5 a packet instead of ordering it online and paying like $15 a packet, you know? Yeah, it's very annoying. If anything, the only places that sell beauty supply store type products for women of color is your African stores. So in most cities, you have African stores that sell African goods, food, you know, hair products, that kind of stuff. Um, so you can go into some of those stores sometimes and find some of the things, but you don't find everything. For the most part, I can't find a lot of stuff that I want in the African stores, so I end up having to buy it online as well. So yeah, beauty supply stores are not a thing here. And the stores that do, you know, carry some of the products you would find, you know, generally in a beauty supply store, they're still priced pretty high. So yeah, once again, we're paying extra money <laughs> okay so while i'm on the topic of things being affordable or not affordable you know how there's affordable drugstore products so you know when i'm watching reviews on youtube they're like oh affordable drugstore makeup affordable drugstore foundation um and unfortunately we don't have that here first of all the drugstores do not carry any of our shades pretty much if we want shades that work for our complexion you know women of color you got to go to the high-end department stores and then you're paying like 60 70 dollars for a foundation so stuff like the revlon foundations l'oreal what you guys consider drugstore makeup um like i said it's not readily available everywhere um you can find them in one or two uh you know pharmacies drugstores but yeah they're priced really high um or you have to order it online and then they're priced really high again so um, yeah, not having access to affordable uh, makeup is annoying because you know you don't want to have to always pay like 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars for a foundation that you haven't even been able to test because it's not in the stores. And you know, sometimes you just want an inexpensive product because it's not that deep. So, yeah, another frustrating thing. Well, so, while we're on the topic of foundation, some of your higher end foundations like your Lancome uh, Estee Lauder sometimes they actually don't carry our shades so they have the what's the long comb one called uh the tint idol they have the range but it stops at a certain shade i remember when lupita nyongo became the face of long comb i was so excited i was like okay let me go into the department store and get you know try on my shade try on my shade how exciting is that get to test it on me before i buy it and i walked into the store they had her picture there but they didn't have the color the full color range it literally stopped at beige and I, I said to the lady does that even make any sense this woman is the face of the product and you're telling me I can't get my shade and she's like yeah unfortunately you know we don't have the full color range here in Australia I said do you realize Australia is very diverse and there are so many black women in this country we have money to spend we want to spend it but we can't spend it because you guys don't offer the products for us I was so frustrated that day and she could tell that I was frustrated and you know I just walked out of there really disappointed because how can a whole Lupita be the face of the brand and I can't get my shade it's just crazy so then another thing is with foundation because not everything's available in store I have to watch a lot of YouTube videos and try and find girls who are maybe a similar you know complexion to me similar undertones and that's how I sometimes pick foundations if I want to try a new product so it's a lot of guesswork and it's not easy it's frustrating and it's just a huge hassle sometimes so I just kind of forget about it and stick to what I know so if I get a foundation I like it works for me I literally just keep buying the same product I don't have the luxury of testing new foundations whenever they come out because it's not accessible to me and that's also another reason why I haven't bought anything from Fashion Nova ever because first of all I've heard so many mixed reviews and for me I wanted to buy jeans obviously because their jeans are very popular I wanted to try some jeans on their website but trying to work out my measurements based on the model 
feel based on the reviews it's just too tricky because someone can be maybe a similar shape to me but their measurements may be very very different and even the size chart they have it's just so confusing sometimes so I've never bought anything on Fashion Nova they need to send me some stuff so I can try some stuff and then decide whether the sizing is good for me um, because I think I got the body to rock some Fashion Nova but yeah I've never shopped on Fashion Nova for that exact reason oh and then God forbid the product isn't good and you want to return it that's a whole nother situation a lot of times if you get a product and it doesn't work you're basically just stuck with it because returning is also expensive so it's just a whole huge hassle and very unnecessary okay so another thing that can be frustrating but I'm definitely used to now because I've been in Australia now for 31 years um, is the time zone obviously we are on the other side of the world we are in the southern hemisphere and most of my friends are in the northern hemisphere so the US the UK Ghana so you know sometimes trying to stay in touch and coordinate times to talk can be a bit difficult because when I'm asleep they're awake when they're awake I'm asleep so I kind of don't really sleep because sometimes I can get up in the middle of the night and start talking to a friend at 2 o'clock in the morning because it's 4 p.m. in Ghana. So yeah, the time zones can be annoying. And then also sometimes for my friends over there who haven't figured out, you know, the time zones correctly, sometimes they call me when I'm fast asleep and or they call me like at a really odd hour because they forget that, you know, it's not the same time zone. So yeah, it's not that big a deal, but you know, it can sometimes get in the way. Okay, so another thing about living in Australia that's very annoying is for those of us like myself who like to go to Ghana often, traveling there is super expensive. Airfares are super expensive. So I started traveling to Ghana in 2010. Um, when I was dating my now husband, I went every year and I remember the first year I got my ticket I think on sale for about 2700 at the time that was good because the prices I was seeing was three three five and up um, I paid as high as four thousand dollars for return ticket uh, to Ghana it's crazy and I was traveling every year so 2010 11 12 13 14 15 16 when we got married went back in uh, 2017 then I didn't go for two years and then went in 2019 so just add that up anywhere from two to four thousand dollars for every year that I travel that's a lot of money and I know for my friends in the US and the UK you guys just get up and you're like oh, I'm going to Ghana and you're paying like eight hundred dollars for a return ticket I would die if I could pay that much for a ticket and obviously I would go more often so yeah going to Ghana is very expensive and you literally have to plan I just get up and say I'm going to Ghana tomorrow uh, so yeah airfares are super expensive obviously if you're going to like your Bali and other places in Asia or the Pacific Islands it's a lot cheaper but if you want to go to the US the UK Ghana anywhere in Europe you're gonna pay you know a nice little amount of money okay so another annoying thing about living in Australia is we don't have access to a lot of US TV shows um, so we can't just jump on like a website that shows a particular program and watch it because it blocks us because we're not in the US so a lot of times you have to stream stuff on third-party websites um, and also because of the time difference you know trying to keep up with shows you know in the US the U mostly the US um, yeah you got to schedule the time so for example Real Housewives of Atlanta I know is Sunday night in the US which is Monday morning here so yeah we can't just turn the TV on and watch you know programs that we really like or you can't just jump online on VH1 or Bravo and just watch the shows from there because it will tell you unfortunately you are restricted from watching because of your location or something like that okay so another annoying thing about living in Australia is we get everything pretty much last so if it launches in the US it takes a little while before it's available here even though you're keeping up to you know what's happening with the product or whatever it is in the US it's often not available at the same time and then that kind of ties in with um, you know fashion uh, obviously being a youtuber I do a lot of haul videos and you guys know with YouTube it's like summer haul, winter hauls, fall haul, spring haul but our seasons are opposite so right now we're in summer you guys are heading or in winter heading into winter you guys are in winter right now um, we're gonna go from summer to 
autumn or fall then you guys are going to spring then we go to winter you guys go into summer and then we go into spring you guys go into fall so everything is opposite so when they launch you know autumn winter fashion uh, runway fashion collection or whatever it's the opposite here so it's sometimes hard being a youtuber trying to you know keep up with the trends you know so if it's fall fall trends we're in summer so I can't really be filming videos um, with fall outfits because it's so hot here I'm wearing dresses and not a lot of clothing because the heat here is crazy so that can be annoying sometimes when you're trying to kind of keep up with the world of being a youtuber and sticking with stuff that's trending and popping yeah it can be annoying sometimes and then the last thing I can think about that's annoying and frustrating about living in Australia is not having access to black owned salons you know going into a salon and you know getting your hair washed and treated and you know taken care of because 90% of the salons here only deal with you know Caucasian hair you walk into a salon and you have textured hair they have no idea what to do with it um, I remember going to this really high-end uh, hair salon one time in Brisbane City I mean you're paying $800, $1,000 at the time for hair extensions um, and I went in with my natural hair it was thick it was blow dried out actually but um, it was obviously thick and the guy was trying to tell me that you know what he could do is he could thin out my hair to get it to not be so poofy and I'm like dude as soon as water touches this hair it's going to just get thick again you know like what you're saying that makes absolute no sense and imagine if I wasn't knowledgeable in my hair and I sat in this chair and he went and got shoes and started thinning out my hair so yeah they have no clue there are a few African salons that you know obviously know how to do African textured or black hair but a lot of the times because they're just a few their pricing first of all is ridiculous because they know you can't go somewhere else where the price is competitive so yeah the prices are crazy high the customer service sucks generally they're not friendly they're not accommodating they don't smile a lot of times so you're like I don't want to spend my money in this place where I'm not even getting treated like I'm a valued customer so yeah I kind of steer away from those that's why at the end of the day I've had to do a lot of my hair myself I braid my hair myself I wash back when I used to relax my hair I relax my hair myself you know I do all my crochet braids myself um, I wash every two weeks and braid up my hair myself I make my own wigs you know I do everything related to hair myself but you know sometimes it would be really nice you know to go into a salon and just sit down relax and get taken care of like I would love to be able to go to a salon and then not even selling like a natural hair salon and get my hair treated and trimmed like there's a girl on YouTube called J hair bigger I think I think she's based in New York and I would love the opportunity to you know go into a salon like that and get my hair you know silk pressed and blow dry you know all that wonderful stuff that we as women love to do you know in terms of taking care of ourselves and self-care but yeah that's unfortunately not readily available to us here like I said there are some but they're super super high in terms of price not very friendly in terms of customer service um yeah so you just end up doing a lot yourself oh and then let's not even talk about like getting your hair braided like every now and then i want to get my hair braided but i mean going to get your hair braided here is definitely going to dip into your pocket so i just usually save all my hair braiding for ghana because everyone knows in ghana they do the best braiding ever um so yeah but it would be nice you know sometimes to just walk into a salon and just treat yourself get pampered and and you know like have that self-care time self-love time for yourself okay guys so that's it I hope you enjoyed this video um, please comment down below um, if you live in Australia if you're an African living in Australia some of your frustrations or maybe where you are there's some stuff that frustrates you as well comment down below and let's get chatting as per usual so thank you so much guys for watching um, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos give me a thumbs up if you like this video share it with your friends and I'll see you in my next one bye